As the AI industry continues to advance, the battle between tech giants heats up. Both companies are eager to integrate generative AI into their search engines, but a single mistake made by Google's chatbot Bard resulted in a loss of $100 billion for Google's parent company Alphabet. The contrast between Microsoft and Google's presentations was evident. Microsoft wowed the audience with a smooth display of their capabilities, while Google struggled to keep up and was left red-faced when a presenter became flustered and embarrassed in front of the crowd because they were unable to provide a live demonstration due to the okay, absence we'll, of a phone. Don't move on. We can't find the phone. Investors weren't so impressed either, causing Alphabet, Google's parent company, to experience a loss of $100 billion in value during and after the presentation, while Microsoft's stock saw a 4.2% increase following their demonstration of how they were incorporating OpenAI's popular ChatGPT technology into products like its Bing search engine. Bing with AI is going to completely change what people can expect from search. We are grounded in the fact that, you know, Google dominates this space. I, I feel like a new race is starting with a complete new platform technology. I'm excited for the users to have choice finally and a real competitive race out there. In a potential game-changing event in the world of big tech, Microsoft unveiled a search engine driven by the powerful artificial intelligence ChatGPT. Then, the next day, Google shoots back and unveils their AI. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said that search-powered artificial intelligence is the biggest thing to happen to his company in the nine years he's been at the helm. He spoke about how AI is transforming every aspect of life and how it is at the forefront of the next phase of the web's evolution. Satya and the team at Microsoft have been paying close attention to the issue of search and how it has remained unchanged for the past 20 years. Some even argue that Google's search accuracy has declined because of keyword stuffing and search engine optimization. But with their new Edge browser and Bing search engine, Microsoft aims to revolutionize the search experience. These tools will not only provide answers to questions, but also engage in conversations and even generate new content. During the presentation, Satya and the team highlighted the current limitations of search by pointing out that 40% of people who perform a search end up clicking back out of the results without finding what they were looking for. This indicates that roughly half of all searches do not yield the desired answers, especially when it comes to specific personal queries. He then presented a chart showcasing the correlation between search and generative AI. The x-axis represented search, while the y-axis represented generative AI. Microsoft's new Bing browser aimed to fill the gap by combining the best of both worlds, offering the robustness of traditional search with the personal touch of a community like Reddit. According to Microsoft, the new Bing is powered by AI that is even more powerful than the current version of ChatGPT and has been specifically optimized for search. By leveraging their existing search engine and web indexing data, Microsoft aims to provide users with a seamless and efficient search experience through the integration with the new version of ChatGPT. Now let's take a closer look at the new Bing interface. When you type a complex query, you'll receive the traditional search result on the left and a synthesized answer on the right. You'll be able to ask about current events, future events, and receive the same user experience. An exciting example demonstrated during the presentation was asking if a certain IKEA seat would fit in a 2019 Honda Odyssey. And what you'll see is Bing can actually find the dimensions of the love seat, the interior space of the car, and then make an estimation as to whether it will fit. In this case, I'm choosing an example of where Bing does not know the answer. And we know, uh, and we know that we can't be definitive about it. And the reason I'm doing that is because we know we won't be able to answer every question every time. But Bing can still provide some helpful information, as you can see on this answer. We also know we'll make our share of mistakes and as we begin to roll this out. So we've added a quick feedback button at the top of every search so that you can give us feedback and we can learn. This was just the start. The centerpiece was the chat feature. I think of this as search with your own personal helper.
to help you refine your query until you get exactly what you're looking for. This comes in handy for activities like trip planning and shopping research. Let's start with shopping. So I'm gonna look for a 65 inch TV. Again, you see our ads at the top, the result, the links on the left, and the answers here on the right. And you can pick whichever you'd like. We give you a good set of answers, but now I wanna refine this query. So I can do that by going to chat. Now I can either swipe up with my fingers or look up here at the top of the screen. We have now a new chat scope. And with that, with one click, you are now into chat. Look how beautiful that is. Search to chat, just so seamless. So you can really, you can just talk to it. You can just ask for it. So in this case, let's say, I'm gonna ask for a gaming optimized TV. All I have to say is, which of these are best for gaming? And we remember all of the context. We know that we're talking about flat screens. We know we're talking about 65 inch TVs. And look how Bing starts to come back. It does all the queries on my behalf and comes back with a great answer. I'm on a budget. I'll ask it to adjust it for uh, which one of these is the cheapest. Again, Bing knows the context and it just goes in and refires the queries. So easy, you just talk to it and you can refine your shopping experience. And again, we find the prices here. I didn't know you could get a flat screen for under $500, but that's a good deal there on Bing if you're looking for a TV. Microsoft has taken things to the next level by integrating AI into their Edge browser. With this new feature, you can easily access a PDF, ask questions about it, get a summary, and compare it with other information available on the web. It's a truly revolutionary change. Here I am on the Gap website. I'm browsing around in my new Edge browser, and I want to read uh, Gap's quarterly report. And up comes the 15-page uh, Gap PDF. It's pretty long. I won't have time to read all that. What I'd love is a, a summary of the key points. I want to show you how now with the power of Bing's AI capabilities within Edge, we can help. With one click, I can open up the sidebar. And now as you can see at the top of the window, we have two features. We have chat and compose. Let me show you how chat works. I can use chat in Edge to simply ask it to give me the key takeaways of the page I'm on. So I'll just say key takeaways from the page and Bing and AI can now read that PDF and look how great. It comes up with the summary of the key points here. Their earnings, the fact that it's gonna reaffirm full year guidance. Very, very cool, a massive time savings. But now I wanna compare this with say Lululemon, who also has their third quarter earnings. Bing can now call out to the web, pull information from outside of this page, bring it into Edge, compare it with the information that's on this page, all with an Edge. And I asked it to do it in a table and look how amazing this is. Just like that in one table, I can get an answer to this question. Think about how much time that would have taken. I am just blown away by Microsoft's recent advancements in AI technology. Not only have they created a search engine that integrates the powerful chat GPT, but they've also added a new composed tab where you can generate content tailored to your specifications. It's truly remarkable. It's amazing to think that the combined knowledge of humanity can now be squeezed into an AI system we're on the brink of something truly historic. And just think about it, we get to be a part of it all. Now, as for Google's response to all of this, unfortunately, it seems like things got off to a rough start for them. What happened there? I can't, I can't understand how they got so far behind in AI. The first advertisement for Bard showcased the AI giving an incorrect answer. And after Fortune reported on the incident, Alphabet stock price began to decline. In the ad, Bard is given the prompt, quote, what new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, can I tell my nine-year-old about? Bard responds with a number of answers, including one suggesting the JWST was used to take the very first pictures of a planet outside the Earth's solar system, or exoplanets. This is inaccurate. The first pictures of exoplanets were taken by the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope in 2004, as confirmed by NASA. The error was spotted hours before Google hosted a launch event for BARD in Paris, where a Google senior executive touted BARD as the future of the company. I must say that the Google event was a bit of a letdown. The focus was mainly on talking about how great existing Google products like Search, Translate, Google Lens and Maps are, rather than the barred conversational AI. 
Google's GPT competitor, powered by their research language model Lambda, was presented as a standalone product. What they showed was very similar to ChatGPT, but there was no indication of how it would be integrated into other products or services. To be honest, it felt like Google was still where OpenAI was last year in terms of chatbot development. However, the one bright spot for Bard was its ability to answer questions with no clear right answer. Google calls this feature Nora, and I'll give you an example. But for many questions, there's no one right answer, what we call Nora queries. Questions like, what are the best constellations to look for when stargazing? For questions like those, you probably want to explore a diverse range of opinions or perspectives and be connected to the expansive wisdom of the web. That's why we bring in the magic of generative AI directly to your search results. So soon, if you ask, what are the best constellations to look for when stargazing, New generative AI features will help us organize complex information and multiple viewpoints. The event failed to deliver any noteworthy or substantial information, indicating that Google may not be fully prepared and doesn't have a solid plan yet. In search, the economics are interesting, uh, which is we already have a profitable business, but with very little share. And so every day, I just want a few users and a little bit more gross margin. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I did see, I think, a tremendous opportunity for us to make some real progress here, where you suddenly can start a new race mm -hmm. with a base where every day is incremental GM for you, uh, and someone else has to play to protect it all, every user and all the GM. So, as I see it, Microsoft is in a pretty good spot right now. They have the potential to make some major gains in the market, and they have relatively low stakes compared to Google. Just a couple of years ago, no one would have thought that Google would be in such a vulnerable position. But after their presentation, it seemed like they weren't quite ready for the competition. They didn't showcase any innovative ways to integrate BARD into their existing products, and the way they presented it was far less impressive than what we saw with ChatGPT. But that's just my observation. What do you all think?